Give me one. Uh-huh. What kingdom? Don't do my brother like that no more. You pass right by. Well, no problem out of you. What kingdom does the little horn that causes the saints or the people of God so many problems come from? Chris, what kingdom? Look at the statue. Remember it said that a little horn came up and plucked up three. Which kingdom does that little horn come out of when it hits the scene? Wrong? You said like you're guessing, sis. Huh? Did you get it at the Bible? All right, my sister said, I'm going to argue with you. We just went over this. She said that the little horn comes out of Rome. Let's see what the Bible says. Come on, some. Oh, I need a reader. Can you come help me, Brother Javo? Get a mic. Uh, Brother Corey is out this today. I'll read it until he's ready. Watch this. Then I would know the truth about the which beast? The fourth beast. One, two, three, four. Then I would know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different, diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with his feet. And the ten horns that were in his head and of the other which came up and before whom three fell, even that horn that had eyes and a mouth that did what? Spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellow. So it came out of which beast? The fourth beast, which was the fourth kingdom. Very good. Let's move. Go ahead, Brother j -Mo. On the hill, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. So wait a minute. When this little horn comes up, what does it do? Attack who? Well, what are you? So whoever or whatever this little horn is, if you are a child of God, you a saint, mama, it said that that little horn got a problem with you. If you're not a saint, you don't have a problem. But if you're a child of God, the Bible said that that little horn, now you got to realize, when this is being spoken, we still in this kingdom. When, when that's talking right now, they are in this kingdom right here, sis. He said, but when this kingdom comes, he said, it's going to be a little horn that comes up in this kingdom and it's going to make war with the, which just so happens to be the clay you see in the image. He said, that's who his problem is going to be with. That's who he's got a problem with. And not only did he make war with the saints, what did he say? It prevailed against them, which means what? It won. It won. So can we protect ourselves? You know the only way you can protect yourself? Stop being a saint. The only way you can protect yourself is get off the Lord's team. But if you stay on the Lord's team, I don't care what kind of guns you got. I don't care what kind of MMA tactics you done learned. God say that that little horn is going to win. Amen? Amen. Let's move. How long was a little horn? I'm moving fast, y'all, because I want to get somewhere. How long was a little horn? I don't like this mic, y'all. It's in and out. We got to do something different. How long was a little horn make war with the saints? And who, who are the saints? So how long, y'all, is this little horn going to mess with the saints? Oh, my sister say to the ancient of days. Well, who are the saints? Let's see what the Bible says. Come on, Javo. Out the hill, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Until the ancient of days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. So we know that judgment isn't given to the saints until the end of earth's history. The church don't judge until the end. So it said that this little horn was winning all the way to this time period in Earth's history. That's a long time to be running things. So watch this. 
Until the time came that the saints did what? So this little horn wreaked havoc until whoever God's people are had their own kingdom. Not before, but up until. That's if the Bible is true. All right, let's move. Come on. This is Revelations 14. Now we're going to the prophecy of John. Come on. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So who are the saints? How do you know a saint? Here is the long suffering, the endurance, the holding on, the hope of the saints. What are their characteristics? Testament. Did I do something? It's, I don't know what's going on. Here we go. I'm sorry. They do what? Commandments. So what if somebody's telling you you don't have to keep God's commandments? All you got to do is believe. Do we see both here? Not only do they keep the commandments of God, but they also what? Have. That's not always the same thing. So you can have faith in Jesus, but don't believe you got to keep the commandments. You keep the commandments and you have faith in Jesus. Amen. That's who the saints are according to the word. Amen. All right. Y'all, I ain't trying to get in and out of my clothes on you. Just. All right. Here we go. Got to go old school. All right. Let's move. What impossible thing would this little attempt to do? Y'all listen to this question. Let it click in your mind. So now we know it's some little horn. We don't know what, who it is. But what is this little horn going to try to do is the question. What you think the little horn going to try to do, Sister Carla? You don't have a clue? We need to know, don't we? We need to know what this little horn is going to try to do. All right, let's see what the word. Come on and help us, j -Lo. Watch this, y'all. And he shall speak great words against the most high. Uh -huh. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. So the Bible says that he will speak great things against who? He's going to speak directly against the Father. And what else will he try to do? He says he will think. To do what? Change what? Uh, he is going to try to change times and laws. That's going to be his goal. Y'all got that? What's the little one going to try to do? Try to change times and laws. All right. And I got a question. What time period will he try to change times and laws? Because he can't have, does he try to change times and laws right here? No. During the time of Babylon? Does he try to change times and laws during the time of Persia? Does he try to do it during the time of um, Greece? No. Does he try to do it during the time of? No. Yes. So when we see, so if the Bible is right, when this so-called attempt to change times and law is supposed to happen during this kingdom's period. That's if the Bible is true. He said it was going to happen during this kingdom's period. And he said it will happen during this kingdom's period. So in order for Daniel to not know what he's talking about, it shouldn't happen here, right? All right. Let's see. Let's move. Look in y'all, y'all can't see this up there, but in your pamphlets, uh, let me see, I got it in my notes. Um, it should be exhibit number one. And it's highlighted down there in exhibit one. Y'all see the highlighted section? Read that in a way they can understand, Brother Javad. The Babylonians began their day when the sun rose. The ancient Jews began the day when the sun set. The Egyptians and the Romans were the first to begin the day 
at midnight or 12 a.m. Now, I got a question for you. Y'all remember when I showed y'all that big old map of the world? And it was a little green and purple section. And I said, I want y'all to think about something that when God finally revealed himself to man, he only revealed it to that little small group of people. God's people, the Jews, for them, when did the day begin? When did the rest of the world time begin? If you're going to be saved, who you going to be standing amongst? The big portion? Or the group that God came and said, let me show you my ways and then you're going to tell the world my ways. <laughs> hey, you better listen to me. Because I'm going to tell you something. When you talk that sunset talk now, you feel strange. Hey, listen to me, Sister Carla. Oh, the sun's about to set. I got to, I got to move. You feel funny when you talk that way. But what I'm saying to you is when God first revealed himself on earth to his people, they did it the way we're trying to do it now. And everybody else followed Egypt and Rome. Who you with? There's nothing new under the sun, y'all. This is history, not Bible. This didn't come out of the Bible. This is an historical fact that Egypt and Rome were the first to begin their day when most of us start ours. Some of us wait till midnight because your birthday don't come till midnight when your birthday came when the sun set. We got some people that they really got the wrong birthday on their birth certificate. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So, so this is saying that our day starts every day in sunset? I'm not going to answer that. What you think it's saying? Mm -hmm. it is what it's saying. Well, why are you asking me? <laughs> I'm just saying the pastor don't have the right to make his own truth. And what I love about this is, you know, folks get funny acting when you go in the Bible because they say the Bible ain't true. But this is history. <laughs> this ain't a scripture. This is an historical fact. And all I'm saying is, before this historical fact came about, notice it say the Babylonians. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm hitting the button. Y'all didn't say nothing. Y'all just <laughs> rolling with me. You know, Terrence would do something like that. Okay, let's see. Where is it at? Where is it? Oh, I went through a lot, didn't I? Oh, I was rolling. Here we go. Okay, so all I'm saying is, you see where it says the Babylonians began the day at sunrise? Look, sis, Daniel was living during the time of the Babylonians. He was a man of God. God told him his plan for earth history. And he told Daniel, during the Babylonian time, that the Romans was going to think to change times and laws. Now, when we read it over here, it's just being recorded as history. But Daniel had already told you right here it was going to happen. In other words, if you was a child of God and you was running with God's people, you weren't shocked by this. You was expecting it. I believe you should get ready for the coming of the Lord. Because the Bible prophesied he was coming back one day. It ain't been wrong yet. Keep playing. All right, let's move. I'm going to stay right here. Oh, Y'all ready to get into this? What did he say that that little home was going to try to do? Think to do what? All right, y'all look at this. This is exhibit three, y'all, in your pamphlet. Exhibit three in your pamphlet. Brother Jeff, we're not going to do all of it. What I want you to do for me first is, I beat y'all to death over the head about the Ten Commandments when it's going through the two covenants, so I'm not going to do it to you again. 
But I do want y'all to see. Y'all notice on the left, it says the Ten Commandments according to the what? Uh-huh. And then on the right, it's the Ten Commandments according to what? All right. We're going to compare the highlighted ones. Read the first commandment in the Bible first, Brother j -Bow, on the right over here. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay, now read it according to how it is in the catechism. Now, before she reads this, who doesn't know what a catechism is? Raise your hand. It's okay if you don't, because you need to know in order to get this. Who does not know what a catechism is? Okay, y'all. So, sister, my our sister Trudy went to the ch Catholic Church, and Brother Francisco's not here, so they can vouch. I've never been, so I can't truly confirm to say I experienced this. But from what I understand, they don't study from the Bible. They study from what's called catechisms. In the catechism, it's a book, and it's in question and answer format. What is the third commandment? And then it'll tell you what the third commandment. So the question would be, what is the third commandment? Then it'll say, A, answer, the third commandment is yada, yada, yada. So you don't read Exodus. You don't get it like that. You study a question. It's like you're studying for a pop quiz, right? So... It says that thou shalt love what, Brother j -Bo? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's what the commandment says. That's the one according to the Bible. What does it say in the catechism? I am the Lord your God. You shall not have strange gods before me. Is that different? Very. Listen, the Bible says you shall have no other god. The catechism said you can't have a strange one. In other words, as long as you recognize them. Why would Rome say as long as you recognize the God? Well, when you understand how it works, you pray to certain saints for certain things. You pray to Peter for one thing. You pray to Luke and, and Francis and all of these other for certain things that you need. So as long as you can identify the God, it's okay. But you can't pray to a strange God. God's word says no other God. And so this is why I challenge you. When you just look up the beauty of Rome, you have all kinds of statues. Right. Anybody like the Marvel characters? Anybody know who Thor is? Thor was a god from there. Which one was it? I don't keep up with it like that, but. I said he was a Norse god of thunder. God of thunder. Now remember when the god of heaven came down on the mountain, they said it was thundering? Yeah. Thor must have been there. <laughs> Huh? I said, do talk about them in the book of Genesis. No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. Ain't but one God. Yeah. Oh, amen. I got you. I got you. So now watch this. Look at, let's see. So number two, let me see the comparison. Number two says, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. Their number two says, you shall not. Oh, look at this. Read the Bibles, number two. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Okay. And what is the other one's number two? The Catholic Church. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Totally took the graven image thing out. Wonder why. They shall think to change times and laws. Rip, what did God say? Well, now we'll get there. Okay, y'all got that one. The Bible says don't make no graven images, period. They number two just say don't take his name in vain. We're not going to even mention graven images. Oh, sorry. What does the Bible say about number three, Brother J. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. 
So their number, the Bible's number three is their number two. The Bibles don't take his name in vain is the number three. That's their number two. So then that means what's their number three? Remember to keep holy the Lord's day. Huh? What else? Remember to keep holy the Lord's day. Is that an S on that? Remember to keep what day holy? Now, for some of y'all that don't mean anything, but for those of you that study or for those of you that reason with other people about, about, I guess I have to say it straight, about why you go to church on Sunday versus Saturday. They say the Sabbath was done away with. We now keep the Lord's day. Implying that the Lord's Day and the Sabbath days are two different days. Are y'all following me? Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm slowing down right here because I'm going to tell y'all something about this is serious. Don't take this for granted because he said that the beast was going to deceive the whole world. And the mechanism, Sister Carla, that he was going to use was through the changing of times and laws. But what we didn't notice, my brother, is I always explain it, explain it like water getting over the top of a dam. Y'all remember Katrina? Once that wall, that levee broke in one place, the floodgates was open. Once that water started running, they couldn't stop it. You understand what I'm saying? And so what I'm saying to you is, is once this power started to break down the commandments and laws of God, the floodgates was open. You didn't realize exactly how much damage it was going to do. But now we, listen, now we've been flooded. We like it was for New Orleans and Katrina. The water's all over the city, and now it's so much water, you don't know where the boy and girl is anymore. Mm. It's so much water on earth now that it's about how you identify. Okay. So you got to learn the proper pronouns and verbs. But you never knew that when he just said you can't have no graven images where we're not going to mention it. We never would have thought that was going to lead to. Are you a girl or a boy? Hmm. How do you feel today? How do you feel, do you feel today? Hmm. What sex? Male, female, or other? Hmm. A little leaven. Leaven is the whole lump. See, we don't understand. When you allow just a little sin to go on, it flourishes into sin you ain't thought about. Yes. So number three, according to the Bible, don't take his name in vain. Their number three is to remember to keep holy the Lord's day. All right. What's the number four in the Bible? Remember the seventh day to keep it holy. And let me do something for you real quick. Let me do something for you. Let's see here. Hmm. I got so much, y'all. Let me. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, let me see if I can blow this up for you. Come on. Don't do that. Uh, hold on, y'all. Um. So what I'm trying to do, Brother J I know y'all can't see that. Let me just get it big enough for Brother j to see. Let's see. Can y'all kind of see that? Yeah. Okay, who knows what a cardinal is? A cardinal is. Not Arizona cardinals. <laughs> huh? Okay. Yes, cardinals are like preachers in the Catholic Church. Right? There was a book called Faith of Our Fathers. 
Okay. Old book. James Cardinal Gibbons was a cardinal in the Catholic Church. I want y'all to see what he wrote in the book of Faith of Our Fathers. Read that, Brother Jabo. But you may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and you will not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. The scriptures enforce the religious observance of Saturday, a day which we never sanctify. They shall think to change times and laws. He said, but you can read the Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelations. You won't find a single line authorizing the change of God's Sabbath to Sunday. He said, not one. Is Saturday the seventh day according to the Bible and to the Ten Commandments? He said, I answer. Yes. Watch this. He says, is Sunday the first day of the week? And did the church change the seventh day? Saturday for Sunday the first day? He said, I answer. Yes. So kids, y'all do me a favor. This is y'all history lesson for the day. On your phone. Just look up Constantine 321 AD. Tell me, just start reading and tell me if you see something that make you go. <gasps> Constantine, the year 321 AD. See if something significant happened back then. All right? Watch this. Read that, J-Bo. Question. Which is the Sabbath day? Answer. Saturday is the Sabbath day. Question. Why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer. We observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. Yes, sir. What does it say? Nowhere in the Bible, what? Nowhere in the Bible is it stated that worship should be changed from Saturday to Sunday. And that was written by Peter Kramer in the Catholic Church Extension Society, 1975, Chicago, Illinois. Let's do this. Kids, y'all find anything? What does it say? Just, did you read anything that kind of stuck out to you about something that happened according to Constantine in the year 321 AD? What happened? Did y'all hear what she said? March what, baby? March 7th? I think you read it the first time, though. You made you read the most important part that he did something on March something. Yes, and when was that? And who put it in place? Who was the emperor? of Rome. Wait a minute. That old man Daniel, way up here, said that when the fourth power will come into play, they're going to think to change times and laws. And a major law was put into place. 321 AD. Listen, mama. 321. 
What year did Jesus die? 33. So 200 some years later, the change is put in place, which means for 200 years, it was the same. But this is what we don't get, y'all. This is why I was just beating you over the head about the power of a kingdom. Y'all know something significant according to the economy during this time? See, like, if we was living right here, y'all, we can't read. We were peasants. We cannot read. You know the only ones that can read? The popes and the educated, the wealthy. We had to take their word for what was said. Now, I got a challenge for you, for those of you that's been here. What was the only Bible allowed? Tell me. Now raise your hand. Raise your hand. What was the only Bible allowed to be read during this time? This is where you get the quote-unquote white man's Bible from. What was the only Bible allowed to be read during this time? You're the only one came to class. Truancy. I'm going to write all y'all up. Truancy. <laughs> what was it, sis? The Latin Vulgate. The what? Latin Vulgate. The, anybody ever heard that? The Latin Vulgate. That was the only Bible allowed to exist. If you was caught with anything different, you know what happened? You were burned at the stake. They would tie you to a pole and take the Bibles you was reading and throw those Bibles at your feet and light them up, mama, and burn you for being in a book that they did not agree to. Oh, man. Let me see. I don't want to get hung up. It's so much I can show y'all. It's so much I can show y'all. Um, let me see here. Let's see. Um, let me close that y'all got that one. I don't need this right now. Um, okay, that's... Let me do a couple of these. Can y'all see this? If I make it better? Bigger, I'm sorry. Okay. This is written by Stephen Keenan, A Doctrinal Catechism, third edition, page 174. Remember, I said this in question and answer. Read that one, Brother Jabo, real quick. Question. Have you any other way of proving that the church has power to institute festivals of precept? Answer. Had she not such power, she could not have done that in which all modern religionists agree with her she could not have substituted the observance of Sunday, the first day of the week, for the observance of Saturday, the seventh day, a change for which there is no scriptural authority. And I don't know if y'all got it. Did you notice the verb used to describe her? He didn't ask you about no she. He asked you about the church. Oh, I'm messing with you because you're going to need it later. He didn't ask you about a she. He asked you about that church. That she going to come up in a minute. So notice when he answered the question. Notice how, boy, he, when you realize he's telling you and you don't even get it. He said, has she? Talking about this church. Not such power. She didn't have this kind of power. She could not have done that which in all modern religionists agree with her. How do you agree with she? Because we ain't talk. She ain't call me. How do I agree with her? She could not have substituted the observance of Sunday for the first day of the week. The, uh, for the observance of Saturday, which is the seventh day, a change for which there is no scriptural authority. So if you really want to know if everybody agree with her, 
Watch what they did observe. Deceived the whole world. All right. If y'all want more, we got to do that in our own time. I got to move. It's a lot of history on it, y'all. Um, okay. Let's see here. And trust me, I didn't touch a lot of it. I'm just showing you all of this history because people will believe history before they believe scriptures. People will believe history before they believe scripture. And that's why I'm doing all this. Um, number four, they got under your mother and father. The Bible has number four. Remember the Sabbath day. Their number five is don't kill. The Bible's number five is under your mother and father. Uh, their number six is don't commit adultery. I, the Bible's number six is don't kill. Their number seven is don't steal. Their number seven is shall not. I mean, the Bible's is don't commit adultery. Eight for them. Don't bear false witness against your neighbor. Eight for the Bible. Don't steal. Nine for them. Don't cover your neighbor's wife. Nine for the Bible. Don't bear false witness against your neighbor. Ten for them. Don't cover your neighbor's goods. Ten for the Bible. You should not cover it. So in other words, you can't cover your neighbor's wife and you can't cover your neighbor's goods. But you can bear false witness. No, they said you can't bear false witness. So what did they do? Oh, they split nine and ten up into two to replace the graven image they totally took him out. Wow. Y'all got what I said? No, not covenant. Don't cover your neighbor's goods or your neighbor's wife was all in one commandment. They took that those in that one commandment, split it up in two to replace what they said. No graven images. Because they took graven images. Because we got a whole lot of So we have graven images. And we have our own day. Now the question is. Sister Carl, this is where it gets hard. Now the question is. Are you in bed with her? Because he says all modern religions agree with her. And how you know is because when she said, no, nah, y'all, we going to do Sunday. And they said, yeah, girl. Because you don't tell me what to do. You ain't my daddy. And some don't just know. See, some are just daughters. Your mama taught you wrong. Oh, I can go going too fast. Oh, wait a minute. Come on. Yeah, too much. Uh, we did that one. Okay. Why was it impossible to change times and laws? Why was it impossible? Come on, J-Bo, read fast. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Wait a minute. Why is it impossible for her to change it? He said this, for truly, that's what that word verily means, for truly I'm telling you, until heaven and earth is gone. Any of y'all from earth? Are you still on earth? He said, well, until where you live is gone. What? Not one jot, that's the dotting of an eye. Or one tittle. That's just the crossing of the T. So forget changing words. You can't even change a letter. <laughs> Shall in no way pass from the law until when all be fulfilled. Atom, listen. You want to know how all ain't been fulfilled? How many of you believe Jesus is still in heaven pleading your case right now? That means we still under the day of atonement. It ain't been done yet, which means it doesn't change. You can't get rid of it. What else? And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one two of the law 
to fail. Wait a minute. Is Jesus trying to tell us it's easier to get rid of these skies and to get rid of this earth than to change his law? But she changed it. Or maybe we was deceived. So you gotta understand. How many mamas in here, daddies in here, you tell your child to do something, right? And some stranger come and tell your child to do something different. And then your child turn to you, mama, and say, Well, Mr. James told me to go over there. Are you not saying, boy? <laughs> what did I? I don't care nothing about what no Mr. James said. <laughs> But that's how we are with God. God gave his law and commandments and she came and said, no, we're going to do this. Yeah. And we went with her. Mm. Wow. And y'all know how I was telling y'all about the power of time? Sis, 321 AD. How are you supposed to ask your great, great, great grandmother if she was living about something that happened Long before she was thought of. Listen, y'all, for all of this slave drive stuff, we were still in Africa. Before you get into all this racism stuff that we try to ride right now, listen, that kingdom was doing its thing before we got on any slave ship. That's silly to have that argument. Slavery was just more confusion. You looking at the smoke, you still don't see the fire. Hey. You caught up in the smoke. That's just part of the confusion. The word said it won't be the slave drivers. It's going to be that kingdom that's going to deceive the world. Now who you believe? God or man? That's the question. It's not to belittle what happened to people, but what God said is, but the little horn that come out of this kingdom only looking for saints. Now, what color you got to be to be a saint? To obey him, to believe in his son. Because that's who he got a problem with. He got a problem with doors. Not what race you was born in. When you are obeyer, when you are a believer, that puts you in trouble. You can be the right color and don't believe in his son and you helping him. You got the mark. He's not interested in you if you don't have faith in his son and keep his commandments. You're not a saint according to the word of God. What puts you in trouble is your walk. And your talk. It ain't enough to be born of the right people. If you was born amongst the right people, now you got to walk like you're one of them. What event would end this power's influence? Now, y'all got to get my mic fixed. Now, I ain't, I'm not no Michael Jackson. I can't be holding this mic. What event would end this power's influence? Y'all, what has to happen to stop this kingdom? How are we going to stop it? Because he said he's going to prevail. How in the world are we going to stop this power? The Bible described that beast as dreadful. Worse than all the others before it. Oh my God, how are we going to stop it, sis? Let's see. Come on. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hand. Mm -hmm. We smote the image upon his feet. They were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. What happened? Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which we smote the image upon his feet. Which means wherever this stone come from, man didn't do it because it said hands didn't do it. Man ain't got nothing to do with this rock. And he said and that rock came from somewhere. And hit this image, which we know is nothing but kingdoms, on his feet, which means it hit it at the end of it. And when it hit it on the feet, it said all of it come down. 
We need to find out who that rock is. That's all bad rock. And somebody got a good aim. Somebody knew the weak spot, didn't he? Watch this. What happened? Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken into pieces together and became like the shaft of the summer threshing floor. Then was the check, iron, check it, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broke into pieces together and became like the shaft of the summer threshing floor. Then was the iron. The clay, the brass, the silver, the gold was broken down into pieces. This is what it's talking about. Folks, you see all that gold and silver? See all that's got to go. Ain't got to do with that. It's talking about all those kingdoms got to come down. That gold and silver and all the monsters was just symbolic of kingdom, period. It ain't deep. That's why I tell y'all, don't try to be smarter than nobody. Just listen to God. Stay humble. Stay low. And just listen to him. And there's something about God's simplicity. It's smarter than the brightest of men. Don't try to be smart. Don't try to be no scholar. Don't try to know everything. Matter of fact, if you really know God, you don't want to know no more. Because to whom much is given. So it ain't a blessing to have all that knowledge. If you can't apply, some people just like to show they know more than others. I'm okay with you knowing more than me. I just want to live what I got. Amen. Is it all right? It's still all right. I'm, I'm good, Dick. I keep on doing my mic on person. Come on. All right. Come on, read that, j And the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. So this rock that came, y'all, when it brought all of these kingdoms down, that rock that destroyed these kingdoms grew and it did what? Filled the whole earth, which means that this rock has now taken over what? The earth. That's what it's trying to show us. The same rock that brought these kingdom down, it grew and it grew up, it grew so much that it's showing us that man, it got so big that it filled the whole earth. Man, what are you talking about? Come on. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high. Did y'all catch that? Who are the saints? And they what? They keep the commandments and they what? It says, watch this. The kingdom and dominion. That means ownership, authority over. The greatness of the kingdom under the what? The whole sky. Shall be given to. In other words, that's in the future. Eventually, the saints will rule the world. You see it? All right. Amen. What? Go ahead, J-Mo. Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Uh-huh. And all the demons shall serve and obey him. How long will his kingdom last? An everlasting kingdom. Which means forever. How many of y'all want to be in a kingdom like that? Yeah. Amen. 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 Let's see what John had to say about it. Come on. And the seventh angel sounded. And there were great voices in heaven saying, Come on. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord uh. and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Do y'all think maybe Christ was the rock that came and hit this image on the feet? And Christ made this earth his kingdom for his people. Maybe that's why, sis. That that place that he went to prepare for us called the New Jerusalem, remember? 
And he said we was going to go live with him for a thousand years. But I don't know if y'all remember something about that great city. He didn't say that city was going to stay up there. He said that that new Jerusalem was going to lower down onto this very earth you sitting on right now. And that, listen, his city was going to be on this earth. I'm going to say it again so you get it. His city will be on this earth. In other words, y'all, just like we can all get in our car right now and go to L.A., you won't live in the new Jerusalem all the time. It's a city that we'll travel to to go see the most high, just like they did in the Bible. But when the heaven comes down on this day, in other words, when the city comes down, the Bible said that we're going to have build houses and have gardens and we're going to have a life outside of the city. But we only welcome in the city because we live right now. See where your treasures are. That song say walk around heaven all day, not Bible. <laughs> every day will be Sunday, not Bible. Because the Bible said you're going to come every Sabbath. Which means it's got to change days. You don't want, listen, listen to me, y'all. I'm just going to go on and say it. You don't want to be there on that first Sunday. No, you so don't. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why I say that. I'm going to show you biblically why I say it. The first Sunday, after that thousand years, you don't want to be there. That's one day you want to have some choice. <laughs> tell the Lord, I'm skipping. I won't be there. I'm going to be with you. Amen? Let's move. What happened to the truth as a result of the activity? Okay, y'all, so get this. Get this question. What is the truth? Sanctify, through them, sanctify them through thy truth. John 17, 17. My word. My word. So the question is, what happened to the truth under the fourth kingdom? What happened to the word of God under the fourth kingdom? I just told you, historically, the only Bible that could be read was? And do you know what was in the Latin Vulgate? The Apocrypha. And do you know what the Apocrypha said you could do? You could go down in your pocket if it was deep enough. And go to the church, mama, and give them enough money to pay for that little dirt you just did. Don't worry about it. It's all done. You could go to the church if you had enough money. If you had a loved one you know didn't live right, you could take some money and give it to the church. And the Pope could have your loved one moved out of purgatory into the holding place so-called paradise until the Lord's return. All this was, listen, almost 1,600 years of them teaching it their way. If you really want to know why people believe you go to heaven when you die, they taught that here. That's where purgatory paradise teaching come from. We get that doctrine. One more thing we picked up from mama. You didn't have to, mama TV do. Every time you go to a, pre, a, a funeral, I already on the other side. It's, listen, we got mama's DNA and don't even know where we got it from. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I can see how that teaching is, uh, can be so uh, well, it's interesting because uh, who wouldn't want to see their loved one going to heaven? And who wants to see their loved one doing better while they're dead? You know, so called. Uh, and then with that being taught the whole 1600 years, and yeah, I can see how it's possible. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you just how hypocritical that is. Let's say the loved one goes to heaven, right? But when you got ready, when you left them, you told them to rest in peace. They up. They wait. They ain't resting. Now, do you want them to get some rest or do you want them to watch you? Make up your mind. <laughs> and here's the problem. You mama's baby, mom, daddy's baby, granny's baby. You cutting up the same way you was when they was living, and you think they enjoying themselves knowing that you ain't going to come up here living like that? Do you think they up there having fun? Resting in peace, which you told them to do because you got it on your T-shirt. 
looking over you and you die like a clown in this bedroom you ain't got no business, cussing and fighting, shooting, doing everything under the sun. But that you believe that would you be resting in peace if you was watching your baby living contrary to God? See, what I'm saying is we practice stuff, and if we just get out the Bible and look at it with common sense, it don't make sense. You don't need no scripture. You just look at it with common sense. Rest in peace. See you later. You already up there with the Father, and I know you're looking down on me. I know this ain't my wife. Don't worry about that, mama. But you're right next to the Father, and the Father started telling you, I sure hope that boy make up his mind to change. Because he ain't coming up here with you. Now, do you think my mom is up there crying? She ain't resting. See, if you got kids, you toss and turn when your kid ain't made it home yet. They went out to the movies, ain't made it home. You sleep, but it's real light. You hear everything, and you can't rest until you know they done made it home. Right. See, sometimes we just get so saved, we lose a lot of our natural intelligence. But we can't lose our common sense. The Lord gave it to us for a purpose. All right. I saw a hand. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Roosevelt. Yes, sir. There's your, there's your answer. There was a time where Babylon was the ruler of the earth, period. There was a time where Persia was the ruler of the earth, period. There was a time where Greece was the ruler of the earth, period. But no such thing as United States, Russia, Ukraine, yada, yada, yada. There was a time where Rome was the ruler of the world. But now we living in a time where Rome is its own so-called entity. United States is its own thing. Russia, China, all of these places. But it said, but in this time, the most dominant influence will be the iron. In other words, it said that this kingdom would be the kingdom that would deceive the whole world. So if this kingdom is deceiving the whole world, do it matter if you're from Russia? No. Do it matter if you're from Cedar Grove? No. I don't care where you're from. The one that's the power behind it all is the iron. And what did the Bible say he got his power from? The dragon. So in other words, while we watching Russians and Earth, we need to be watching how is this iron playing a part in my life today? Because that's the one looking for me. That's the only one that care if I'm on the Lord's side or not. That's if you believe the Bible. So you can narrow down your fight. But the iron is all over the world, mingled with the clay. So just like you got people on the saints all over the world, you got iron all over the world. All right. So what happened? Read that, Javo. What happened to the truth? And hope was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. Right. And he cast down the truth to the ground and it practiced and prospered. It did what with the truth? Cast it down. To the ground. And not only did it throw the word down to the ground, what did it do? And it practiced and prospered. So just the other day, this week, came on TV in Dallas. Keller, ISD. It's an outskirt of Dallas. They just took the Bibles out the library. They took prayer first. So prayer's out, prayer out here too? Now I know some schools probably still doing it. But was prayer legally taken out here in Louisiana? Yeah. I, I think it's that way pretty much across the United States. Prayers are not allowed in school. Yeah. Right? Guess what books can stay? <laughs> no, the one that teach you about what's a boy and a girl. Those books didn't get put out. Quran is not allowed. Holy Bible is not allowed. Some books with some wholesome teachings. It was poor. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. it, um, it said, where was Jesus Christ? Was he alive on the earth before he came to live on the earth? And I was like, wow, I don't think I want to open that up at all. Was he alive on the earth before he came to live on the earth? Yeah. Depending if you're spiritual or not. 
I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. The Bible said that Jesus is the living word. The Bible said he came in the beginning was the word. Was God. The word was with God. He came in word first. New Testament, he comes in the flesh. And that's why he was messing with the Jews. He was like, how you don't recognize me? You stand in the synagogue teaching about me every day. Now I'm standing in front of you. You don't even know me. See, they were stuck at the letter. The letter had not come alive to them yet. And that's how a lot of us are today. You will keep the commandments, but ain't no life in it. You, ain't rela- you have no connection to the author. You just doing it in a legalistic way. Yes. What must happen before Jesus comes? Come on, Javo. What's got to happen before that rock comes back? Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, Mm -hmm. as that the day of Christ is at hand. All right, come on. Let no man deceive you by okay. any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. That's one thing that's got to happen. What else? And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Do not be tricked by nobody. The first thing that has to happen is there has to be a falling away first. You are witnessing it. Yes, it's so, I keep saying it, but I don't know. If, listen to me. Listen to me. What's the agenda? What is the agenda that we are now arguing? What is a male and female? And listen, and it depends on how you wake up feeling. Do you know they can give you hormones to make you feel like a woman? They can give you hormones to make you feel more manly. So I'm going to tell you something. You got to watch scene. I don't know if y'all heard about it. I'm going to tell you what one brother did. I'm going to feel like a woman. I'm going over to the women prison. Okay. I'm going to live in luxury. I'm going to do my 20 years in luxury. I don't care about you talking about me. I'm going to twist my way right on over <laughs> to the women's prison. You can call me Shamika, whatever you want to call me. I can curl that. Because when the lights go off, I'm going to show you I'm a man. And the dude ended up with two babies in the women's prison. He said, y'all want to play how you feel? I don't feel like staying over here with all these dudes. I feel like a woman today. Y'all need to transfer me. The dude was smart. He was using his head. <laughs> Went over there and made two babies. They kicked him back out, sent him back. He in trouble now. He in trouble now, y'all. But maybe it was worth it. <laughs> but he got to thinking. All I got to do is identify and get transferred. And you know you can't talk about me. So y'all, if, if y'all that do TikTok and social media, they talking about so many topics that only God can answer the question. And if you notice, when they have these conversations. That's the one thing they always keep out of it. God's opinion. It's got to become a falling away first. That's what's got to happen. And then it says, and that man of sin, that man, that man of sin has to be revealed. He is the son of perdition. When you look up that word perdition, it means destroyer. So whoever this man is, he is a son of the destroyer. When you look that word up in the Greek, this perdition, it says apalia. That's the Greek word, apalia. Well, if you go to Revelations, the devil is referred to as apalion. Don't take my word for it. Study it for yourself. The, the word for perdition is apalia, son of the destroyer. When you go to the Old Testament, it refers to the dragon, Satan, as apalion. I 
I need for y'all to write it down. See, now nah, we're not going to do church. Write it down and go check it. Do like some people in the Bible. Be more noble. Go check for yourself. Don't just amen. I know it sounds good, but now I want you to be able to stand on your own too. I don't care who's standing before you. You know what the word said. Don't be talking about what Pastor James said. I'm not taking that phone call. I'm going to tell you now. I'm going to say, where are your notes? Uh-huh. Tell him to give you a minute. Pull your notes out because you wrote it down, remember? What about this man, this son of perdition? What does he do? Who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God uh-huh. or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. So look how he acted. He acted just like Satan did. Go ahead, brother. There's a guy named Duval Noah Harari, who I think fits the description of that. Mm. Where is he from? Uh, he's from, um, um, he's from uh, Israel, I think. He's like a PhD uh, university instructor, and he thinks well, just like logical. He doesn't think about God at all. Like, he's really bad. Like, bad news. You know what? He might be, he might have a mark, but he ain't the man. You know how I know? The Bible told us that man was going to come from this kingdom. See, that's the, that's, that's the things you got to keep together. It'll be a whole lot of false. But Daniel has let us know this dude is from here. You know how we say, where you from? Then you say, the dude that's doing the dirt is from here. So listen, you can have the mark and be in Israel, Dallas, Shreveport. But the true man is from. Yes. So no disrespect. Maybe uh, the dude, he, he the corner dude. He the dude that work on the corner. Well, but now listen to what I'm saying. The power behind the dude is so powerful that the corner dudes look powerful. He said that this kingdom was exceedingly great. That's why I kept stressing the power of king. We can't fathom that kind of strength. So in other words, if the boss man is exceedingly powerful, the dude on the cone is pretty bad. And listen, the Bible said he was going to deceive just a little bit of the world. That same dude, y'all, listen, got one out of every three angels to get kicked out of heaven. How you in heaven, and you let somebody talk you out of heaven. That tell you the conversation this dude got to have. And if he deceived an angel, so what the Bible is trying to teach us right now, he's saying, listen, church, let me tell you who this power works through. Let's move. How much of the world did God say would be deceived? Read it, j And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. Mm. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So we know that the devil is the dragon. We also know him as the serpent. We saw way back in Genesis. We know him as the devil. We know him as... Which does what? Deceive it, the whole world. And where the Lord sent him when he put him out of heaven? He was cast out into the earth. Where you live? Earth. And who will came with him? And his angels were cast out with him. What people did God say the devil or dragon would be angry with? All right, we ain't got to go over that. The dragon was... 
Oh, too fast. What woman? What church? Are you part of the church? Have you been baptized into Christ? So if you have accepted the Lord, the devil hates you. Wait a minute. I thought, all right, we just want to be saved. I ain't thinking about the devil. I just want to stop living wrong. But the devil is saying, the day you chose Jesus, the day I started hating you. Oh, but wait a minute. But what about if you live in a lifestyle saying, now I'm going to do me first? How the devil feel about you? He ain't worried about you. He ain't worried about you. Because you're in perfect position for him to write. <laughs> you are already with me. Okay. Choose ye this day whom you going to serve. It's just kind of like, you know, if Theo found out it was a Cleo, he going to say, well, Nisa, I'm going to tell you this one time. You better come on get in this car, girl. Because if I start this car and pull out this parking lot, choose you. Theo said, you better make your mind up. Choose. God is saying to us, are you with Satan? I ain't. Stop playing. I would be picking side, huh? You won't take both phone calls. Hold on, let me hold on, Lord. Let me hold on. Ah! I know. Yeah. Yeah. All right, devil. Yeah, I miss you, devil. I know. I'm coming to the club. Hold on. But I call you back, all right? Hey, Lord. Yeah, oh, that was just a friend. Ah! Where did the beast receive his power from to do what he's done? Y'all. The dragon and the beast are two different things. The beast is who the dragon works through. So when you hear about the beast, don't think that's the devil. No, the beast is under the devil. So the question is, where did the beast get his power? Come on. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Who gave him the power? Dragon. And who is the dragon? Dragon. dragon? All right. Come on. How much of the, how how much much of the world? How much of the world did God say would follow the beast? And when you follow the beast, whom are you worshiping? Come on. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. How much of the world? All the world. I challenge y'all. If you do social media, watch the spirit of the world. They all move in the same. This has become the most selfish. Look at me. I'm all that spirited time I've ever seen in my life. Cameras used to be for taking pictures of other folks. Now you got more pictures of yourself in your phone. You got kids and stuff. You hardly got pictures of them. <laughs> I know people, you wouldn't even know they was married. Every time you see them. I know you got a husband. Where he at? I know you got a wife. And every now and then, they'll pop up in a picture. <laughs> he said in the last day, he said, people are going to be lovers of themselves. Come on. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. What? They worshiped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Ain't nobody more powerful than this dude. Who able to go up against? I got to move. I got some. I want. I got to show y'all before I let you go. Who are the true saints of God, and why is it important? Okay, we'll just beat that dead horse. Who are the saints? Yeah. 
Here is the patience of the saints. Here are, Here are they the saints. The commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Let that one stick in your soul. Because everybody that claim to be saints and they don't keep his commandments. If you love me. But come on. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Why? That they may have right to the tree of life. Huh? And may enter in through the gates into the city. Your obedience. Remember I told you we won't live in the city all the time. It's your obedience to his commandments is your ticket when you get to the gate to say, come on in. You get to the gate and you ain't been obeying his commandments. Beep, beep, beep. You must have bought this ticket off the street. Yeah, somebody done hustled you. You better try to see if you can find get your money back because Somebody told you you didn't have to keep God's commandments. Somebody told you that was on the cross. And you listen to them. You better go find them and get your all. Like them virgins. Where was all? Oh, I've been, thank you. Now it's going to get fun. Anybody ever had their stuff stole? How you feel? Listen to me. I need to talk to somebody in our way been saved. Let me find somebody. Darvis, you're going to work. Darvis, see this dude that stole your stuff. And you know, listen, I'm that dude friend. When you come and find me, you say, Pastor, where you stay at? Huh? That question carries some weight, right? If I told you where he stay, is that a game changer for you? Well, what if I told you where that woman stay at? The one that's trying to deceive you. Would it make a difference if the Bible told you where she stay? Forgive my grammar. Would it make a difference if you knew what, like, would she be real if you knew where her crib was? Would you stop reading this Bible as a fairy tale if they told you? This is where she lives. Would you stop calling her a computer? Would you stop calling her Russia? If I said, now here's her address right here. Does that make a difference to you? I can't listen, y'all. I got to show you the address. And so many people know it. But, you know, they say if you don't want them to know it, put it in the book. Come on, read this. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. The great who? Whore that sitteth upon many waters. Did the Lord just call somebody out their name? And not only call that, say she a big one. Lord, you don't know, Lord. Lord, you tell us not to talk like that, Lord. I don't get it. <laughs> Lord said, no, nah, this weird. I just got to call it like I see it. And he said, and she sit on many waters. What in the world are you talking about? Where are these waters? Where are this? Big old woman sit. All right, come on. Tell us where she lived, J-Bo. And he said unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the four cities are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So you mean to tell me that the waters was really symbolic of different people? Different multitudes, different nations, different tongues. In other words, she all over the world. All right. Now I'm going to start picking at you. Well, get your blood pressure up a little bit. How many of you grew up Kojic? When has a Kojic pastor from Russia ever visited you? Is it a Kojic church over there? Mm. How many of y'all Baptist bread and Baptist till you day? <laughs> Oh, 
Uh, Y'all ever have complication in China? You, you mean tell me y'all ain't in China? Who oh, I forget? I bet let's say you seven day Venus. Oh, you got the Sabbath. <laughs> Are you in Afghan? You go to Afghan, talking about remember the Sabbath day? I dare you go there and say Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. See, what my point is, over here in the United States, we spend days and hours arguing our denominations. Ain't none of us carry no weight. Ain't but one chick bad enough to be in countries where they don't even believe what she believes. And she can come in there and set up shop and hang out and get treated like royalty and walk out and nobody bother. Hey, but one church that can do that. Historical fact. I ain't talking about scriptures. They put it on your TV all the time. The Pope is in Israel. The Pope is in Afghan. The Pope is in China. Some of these are Buddhist countries. Not only do they not believe in God, they believe in another God. And you walk in there and we roll out the raw carpet for you. But anybody else will put them in a communist camp and blow their head off. But you can walk in. And we. And I know this don't mean nothing to you, but here's the only problem. Historians say Daniel wrote what he said long before Rome was even heard of us. And he said, times and laws, and this little horn was going to come out of this place called the fourth kingdom. And now we see the fourth kingdom got the very power Daniel said. That ought to mess with you a little bit. Because you are living in a time where you are seeing it. The people that died during Persian Greece, they didn't get to see it. I can see why they doubt. If you say you don't see it, then you are choosing darkness. Because when you're just trying to watch the news, they show it to you. Let the Pope today die and see if don't every king from every continent go to the funeral. They ain't going to say, oh, I got a meeting. Whatever they got going on, it's canceled. What did she do to the inhabitants of the earth? Come on, j -Bo. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. What does a king have? A what? So is, would Joe Biden be like a king according to the scriptures? You say yes? Then what's his kingdom? United States? Let me show y'all something. Let me show y'all something real quick. All right, Javo, you're going to have to use your good eyes. Okay, y'all. So this is more historical facts. Y'all see where it says meetings? List of meetings between the Pope and the President of the United States. Y'all see that? The first meeting between Pope and an incumbent, uh, what's that word? Incumbent U.S. President took place in the aftermath of World War, January 1919, and the Vatican between Benedict, what is that, 10, 5, 15, and Woodrow Wilson. So watch this. Y'all see this? January 4th, they met at the Apostolic Palace. Where? Who was the president? The Pope was? This is the first meeting between the kings in the United States. The first visit by sitting a sitting U.S. president in Europe. I'm going to come on down. All of these, I'm just going to show y'all so I can see this. 
Dwight Eisenhower met with him in 1959 at the Vatican. John F. Kennedy met with him in 1963 at the Vatican. Anybody know where the Vatican is? Is where? Keep that in mind. October 4th um, at the Waldorf Astoria in New York. Linda B. Johnson met with him then. He met with him again in 1967. Um, Richard Nixon, 1969-1970, on and on and on, all of these presidents, Ronald Reagan, George Bush, twice, watch this, Bill Clinton, why are our presidents meeting with this man? What's the necessity of it? We don't get oil from him. We don't get diamonds from him. We don't trade with him. Y'all quiet. I wonder y'all think about or is it really making you think? What do we need to talk to them about when we, they're not even a part of our major trading? You've never heard it said, well, Rome is low on all. So the prices of gas is going up. Diamond trade is down. We don't get resources from them. So what is it that our president needs to talk about? Now, he is supposed to be the substitute for Christ, and we can't even have prayer in our schools. What are we talking about? I just want to get down here. Y'all remember this fella right here? Y'all know him? Y'all ever heard of him? This he met with him in 09? 14? 082? No, that's not him. 09, 14, two days in September, in 15. Let's see. Didn't tell us what they met about, but we know what we know what he opened up the doors a lot for. Yes. Now here's what I want to get to. Y'all know this one, this fella? Watch this. Occurred during President Trump's visit to where? Israel is predominantly what type of country? Religiously. Jewish? There you go. They majority Islam. Sunni and the uh, Kurds. Yes. Those are the two different. Right. Predominantly it's Islam. Trump was over there meeting with Israel over some issues we was having. Right? Watch this. The West Bank, Italy, and Saudi or who? The meaning perceived. Uh. See, that's why I told you not to go live right there. That's why I didn't want to record it. Cause let's see. It's right. I ain't going to stop nothing. I read it already. <laughs> Listen to me. Trump and Israel had been into an argument over all and stuff that was going on, right? They met in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is predominantly a Muslim country. But to say it went peaceably because they all met with the Pope there. What decisions is the Pope making about the all and the issues we got? You know, I know we're not a people that really care for history, but here's the problem where you got to be careful. The Bible is saying when it go down, these are the ones coming for you. So keep just going to church. Talking about I had church today and oh, he showed sure preach. You better know who your enemy is. Because you can be going to church every week and don't know that you are a daughter of this great whore. Oh, let me show you the Bible. Did y'all know the Bible says she got daughters? See, well, people say, oh, I ain't, I ain't in the Catholic Church. No, but you her daughter. Is she? Okay, let's move, Jeff. We got to finish this. Come on. Uh, let's see. What were the colors? Oh, yes. Get your books out. You're going to need this. What were the colors of this big one? 
She got, she got some, the Bible says she got some favorite colors. Y'all want to know what her colors were? Oh, come on. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Scarlet color and dipped with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Oh, I think it's in the slide. I think I can show you. What were her colors? All right, kids, this is just for y'all. I'm going to put it up here. But just in, your, in Google, just put in scarlet and purple. And then go to the images section, the picture section. See what you see. Just put in scarlet and purple. What y'all see? And having a what cup? The what cup? Now this is twofold. The abominations are actually things where the world has spiritually been deceived. Things we've taken part in that was disgusting to God, but yet we drank of that cup. That's just symbolism. But that dude, remember he said, you know she real because she changed the day and all modern religions follow her because they keep Sunday instead of Saturday and it was calling her a she he was talking about the big woman now he's telling us the big woman got a favorite color red and purple And understand, this is written somewhere before Constantine made the change. So Christ died in 33. So sometime in that 200-year period before we get to 321, Revelations is being written. John is writing down his prophecy that he got from God. The revealing comes later. All right? What was she called and what did she do? Go ahead. And upon her forehead was a name read, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. She's the mother of what? Harlots. So that means her kids are. It's okay. You can say you're just right. You read it out the Bible. You know, in the world, you say your mama. <laughs> Never mind. This she is the. You get it from your mama. You get, that's the good one. You get it from your mama. It said the greatest one is she. The cardinal already told us who she was. Said because she changed times and laws. And it says, but she is the mother of, of who? who? The question is, how many harlots are there? We living in a time now where people just like to look like one, but they say they ain't one. Oh, and the last part, and abominations of the. All right, come on, read that. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. She was drunk with the blood of who? The people that kept his commandments and with the blood of who? Ooh, gosh, out of time. Sorry. All right, we'll have to pick up here. Thank you. I read really time flew by. Y'all, this is your homework. I want you to read. You don't have to read it all, but look it up. Spanish Inquisition. Protestant Reformation. The Bible said that she was responsible for the blood of the saints. She was killing saints and martyrs. Anybody know what a martyr is? What is a martyr? Uh, they died for their beliefs. All right. And when we go over the Bible lesson, I'm going to show y'all a man 
this man had writ, wrote another Bible other than the Latin Vulgate, sis. They said that the Pope was so mad that 40 some years later, almost 40, it was a bunch of years later after he had died, he, he told him to go dig up his bones and crush him. That's how mad he was for doing it. But whoever she is, she's responsible for the murder and the blood of God's people. That was her target. Ain't but one kingdom did that. And it'll help you understand why in your constitution they had the right freedom of because she said you don't have no freedom. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. Okay. Spanish Inquisition, Protestant Reformation. Yes, yes. All right. Let us pray. I'm sorry. I didn't realize the time got away from me. Whew. We'll finish it when we come back from baptism. There's not much left. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to just study of your word. Father, we pray nothing was said that's unpleasing in your sight. Lord, we just come praying for your guidance, Lord, and that you keep us in the way that you would have us to go. If this is your will, let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.